Hi everyone, this is Ilker Boss. In this presentation, I'm going to go over the indirect tensile cracking test, also known as ideal CT test, as performed in accordance with ASTM D8225. This is a test method required by WIDAT to evaluate cracking potential of asphalt mixtures as part of the balanced mix design process. This test method covers the procedures for preparing, testing, and measuring asphalt mixture cracking resistance using cylindrical laboratory prepared asphalt mix specimens at an intermediate temperature. This test method describes the determination of the cracking tolerance index, CT index, determined from the load displacement curve obtained from the indirect tensile test. This parameter can be used to evaluate the resistance of asphalt mixtures to cracking. As just indicated, this test method is a requirement for V.BMD process and used to determine asphalt mixture cracking resistance at an intermediate temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius for Virginia climate. In general, the higher the CT index value, the better the cracking resistance, and consequently, the less the cracking amount in the field. This slide shows the apparatus needed to perform this test as indicated in the ASTM D8225 standard. Please check this standard for further details on testing apparatus requirements, especially for the loading device and its accessories, as well as the conditioning chamber or water bath. For example, the loading device shall have a loading capacity of at least 25 kilonewton and be able to apply and maintain a constant deformation rate of 50 plus minus two millimeter per minute. The conditioning chamber or water bath shall maintain the target test temperature of 25 plus minus one degree Celsius for conditioning specimens before testing. Please also note that there are additional apparatus such as ovens and pans needed to prepare compacted specimens, but not indicated in the standard. The cracking test can be conducted, conducted on lab mix, lab compacted, or field mix, lab compacted, or field course. Please note that the testing field course are not part of VMD, uh, v dot BMD requirements. V dot BMD spec requires five replicate specimens for this testing, and the specimens shall be compacted to seven plus minus 0.5% airway content with a height of 62 plus minus two millimeter and a diameter of 150 plus minus two millimeter. Specimen pro preparation procedure for lab mix, lab compact specimens. For short term aging, loose mixture shall be conditioned for four hours at the design compaction temperature prior to compacting. Once the short term aging is done, compact five specimens to the air void and specimen size requirements. For long term aging, loose mixture shall be conditioned for eight hours at 135C following the short term aging. Once the long-term aging is done, compact five specimens to the air void and specimen size requirements. Once specimens are made and cooled down, place specimens in an environmental chamber or water bath at 25 plus minus one C for two hours plus minus 10 minutes. If specimens are to be conditioned in a water bath, specimens must be sealed in plastic bags to remain dry. Once conditioning is done, testing can start. Specimen preparation procedure for field mix lab compacted specimens. For short term aging, bring the loose mix to the compaction temperature and compact immediately to the air void and specimen size requirements. For long term aging, bring the loose mixture to 135C and condition for eight hours at 135C. Then compact to the, compact to the air void and specimen size requirements. Once specimens are made and cooled down, the same conditioning procedure indicated for, for, for the lab mix, lab compacted specimens applies for the field mix, lab compacted specimens. Once conditioning is done, testing can start. Testing procedure. The loading strip should be inspected to make sure that all contact surfaces are clean. The specimen, should be installed on the loading strip in a way that it is centered and making uniform contact on the loading strip. The loading shall be applied at a deformation rate of 50 millimeter per minute 
until the load drops below 0.1 kN. Please consult with the operator manual or equipment manufacturer or one of us at VTRC for how to operate your equipment. It is important that the testing shall be completed in four minutes or less once the specimen is removed from the conditioning environment. Now we are gonna watch a demonstration video for the IDT cracking test. Once the testing is done, obtain the load displacement and displacement time curves from the testing software. These curves should be checked for each specimen as part of test quality control. No seeding load shall be applied at the beginning of the test and the loading rate of 50 plus minus 2 millimeter per minute shall be maintained throughout the test until the load drops below 0.1 kN or less. The figure on the left shows an acceptable load displacement curve and the figure on the right shows an acceptable displacement time curve, which shall have a slope of 0.83 when displacement is in millimeter and time is in seconds. Non-compliance in test data can lead to incorrect CT index values that would result in unnecessary redesigns or rejected materials. In the next three slides, we will see examples of non-compliant data. As we can see, the load did not drop below 0.1 kN, although the required loading rate was maintained throughout the test. Also in this example, the load data shown are in US units instead of kN as labeled. Consistency in units is needed for correct calculation of the CT index. Another example of a non-compliant data. In this case, a seeding load applied at the beginning of the test and LVDT error towards the end of the test. The test software should be configured to remove the testing seating load and the LVDT installation and range should be checked. In this figures here, it seems that the loading RAM and LVDT is not synchronized, therefore resulting in non-compliant data in and inaccurate CT index values. CT index calculation. Once the test is the test is performed in accordance with the standard and the curves are compliant, the CT index can be calculated using the equation shown in this slide. GF is the area under the curve normalized by specimen dimension. T is specimen thickness or height. D is specimen diameter. M75 is the absolute value of the slope at 75% of the peak load. And I75 is the displacement at the slope. Note that units are given in SI system. So once we calculate the CT index, what does it tell us? We would compare the seat, average CT index value of asphalt mixture to the CT index value of 70, V.BMD spec requirement. If the average CT index is less than 70, that means the mixture is crack susceptible and fails to meet V.BMD spec criteria. If the average CT index is 70 or more, that means the mixture is crack resistant and passes the V.BMD spec criteria. It is very important to note that the threshold criteria of 70 for the CT index is for field mix lab compacted specimens after reheating. Initial analysis of the test data obtained from studies at VTRC indicate that the test results from lab mix lab compacted specimen are comparable to the test results obtained from field mix 
lab compacted specimens after reheating. The research is underway to finalize the precision estimates and statements for this test. Single operator variability from VTRC's round robin phase one study is 20.7% in terms of coefficient of variation. And this is based on using five replicates. This is not part of the V.BMD spec for the 2021 construction season and has not been finalized yet. However, I presented it here to give you a sense of a single operator variability that you may expect from this test. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them through the Q&A box or ask them during the Q&A session or email them to me at ilker.boss at v.virginia.gov. Thank you again.